and we are so blessed to have Julie and Israel Zalazar and those two blessed children. My, now, last time you were here, right? You, she was, wasn't born. No, well, not born yet. So, <laughs> and she's drinking coffee. No, he's, <laughs> see, you're in South America all this time, and you're drinking coffee. There you go. I did too when I was your age, and look what happened to me. So you're good. Yeah, you're all right. It won't stunt your growth or anything. I promise. <laughs> well, so today, um, Israel and Julie are going to be talking to us about um, their mission trip, what's been going on, and they're going to they're going to present um, today. Um, and give the message. And so we're so blessed to have you here and, and your wonderful children. And that said, um, when it comes time for Israel and, and, and Julie to come up, if there's somebody here that would like to um, perhaps assist in the nursery, that would be great. Um, the older kids can stay here. Oh, so Barb, so thank you, Barb. You already took care of that. All right, great. Thanks, Barb, very much. And, um, and that will be wonderful. And after the service today, um, there's going to be a time of fellowship in the back, so please stick around and um, get a chance to talk to Julie and Israel and uh, ask them questions and get to know them a little bit better. They were here a couple of years ago, as I said, and it was just an amazing blessing. Um, I can tell you from the emails and from the reports we get that God truly is, the hand of God is truly on you. And, um, and it's because they seek the face of God. And that goes from their service to where they are in South America, to their wonderful children and how God has blessed you with your family, and to the health that you have, Julie, we're rejoicing in that as well. And that's okay. Feel free to walk about the cabin. It's quite all right. Um, hopefully there won't be any turbulence, but um, you, should be, <laughs> you should be good to, to go. And the, uh, the other thing is there's been, there's been a lot going on this weekend, so we are, we are not going to meet tonight, so that we will not meet tonight. Um, and, uh, other than that, uh, one of the things, you know, it's a little different this Sunday, but what we're trying to do is to come in around, if, if you're able, about five minutes to 11 and, um, Jim was singing a beautiful song and we're going to, uh, we're going to have the ready so we can learn something new. Um, and, uh, but just to lead us in music to get us here and, and prepare us really for, for worship, to get our hearts ready to worship the Lord. So, um, that said... Um, if we're, we're good, um, I'm going to check back there as far as music, not yet. So, um, I can, I, I can only talk for a couple more minutes and then we'll be good to go. So, um, one of the things that, uh, we'll share with you too, is that, um, starting next week, I'm going to get together with a uh, leadership and put together a schedule. So when I'll be here during the, um, during the week. So as you know, I've been um, preaching a little bit down at Greenfield, not a little bit, I've been preaching in the morning down at Greenfield Center um, and helping out down there. So during the week, I'll be dividing my time. And that said, if you would like a Bible study during the week, I know it's not easy for um, some to get out at night. Now, I understand that. So if it's easier for you to get out during the daytime, well, then uh, well, we can do that. I'll be here during the day and we can have a time of prayer we can have a, a Bible study. So for those of you who cannot get out, you know, maybe on a Wednesday night or you cannot get out on a Sunday night, it's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, we'll have it in the bulletin too. Uh, I'll put my hours that I'll be here during the day. And if uh, during one of those days you would like to have a Bible study, that would be uh, fantastic. And we can, we can do that uh, during the daytime. Or maybe it's, it's time that you want to, um, to come and to pray. That's wonderful. We can have a time of prayer. Maybe it's something that you just need to meet with me about, and that is wonderful as well. And we'll schedule those, however, the, the meetings. Um, I'll be here. If there's nothing going on, you're welcome to, to pop in, and uh, we can have some conversation. But if I say, sorry, I've got other things going on, then I have to leave, then I have to leave. So if you really want to spend some time, um, then we would schedule that out um, for, for those visits here. And the other part of that is we are now with um, having deacons here, so we will be scheduling a time where uh, I, along with the deacon and Marshall's elder, will be going out and, and doing some visitations, not just to the shut-ins, but also to, to the homes as well. And so we'll visit you in the homes, and you can come here if you're able to, but if not. So we're going to be expanding the ministry, um, the pastoral ministry, if you will, now that I have, uh, quote-unquote, retired. 
uh, I'm busier than ever being retired, but that's okay. It's a good thing to do work for, for the Lord in this context. Great. Yep. So if you would stand, the first two songs, hymn number 57 and 58, they're going to be together. So they're back to back. So let's stand and sing to the Lord together. So I know there are one or two of you that really hate this style of music, but there are also one or two of you that really love this style of music. So I won't do this to you too often, but... to come out of the seats, greet each other and the Lord, and try to find somebody you don't know. You might be able to do that. Yeah, the first song we're singing, Sing Unto the Lord, a new song, as we're getting ready for hymn number 84. Um, I know that Paula would, would, uh, would agree that way back in the Old Testament, they were singing a new song to the Lord. And you can picture the, the, the praise coming from the Jewish people uh, right out of the psalm, as they were singing to the Lord a new song. And uh, we have been given a new song, right, because of Christ. And so Paul knows about the Jews just rejoicing. Remember, there was a time in the Old Testament they could not sing. When they were in captivity, they could not sing. And so when they could sing again, they were singing to the Lord a new song. And praise was breaking out in Israel throughout all of Israel, and they were blessing the Lord, O oh, my soul. And in hymn number 84, it's marvelous. God has shined in our hearts to give the light of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And so now we can come and we can sing, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Let's sing. So true. 
those who are in great need. So let's bow our heads this morning. Father, today we bless you, Lord. Pray we honor you and we worship you. And Lord, it has nothing to do with who we are or what we can bring. But Lord, this is a matter of our heart. It's a matter of what you do in us and through us. But I pray, Father, that we would not quench the Holy Spirit. That you would just have your way in us and with us. That we would be like clay in the potter's wheel. Father, you mold and you make us however you want us to be. And you place us wherever you want us to be. Because ultimately, Father, we want to bring glory to you. Your word tells us that you will not share your glory with anyone else. We don't want to try to do that, Lord. We want you to receive glory. We want to see you shine, Lord, so people would see Christ shining through us. Oh, how we want to exalt Christ and lift him up. We know that we are in right standing with you, Lord, because that's the work of the Spirit of God is to exalt Christ. So, Father, I pray that today we would empty ourselves. You would put us on the potter's wheel and mold us and make us new. Fill us afresh again today, Lord. As I have read, it is not about church revival. is not about people filling the pews. But it's about you, God, filling the hearts of the people that are here. Then revival takes place. So fill us afresh today, Lord. Pray we empty ourselves out so that you can fill us with you. Lord, we lift up our brother in Christ that close today. Lord, we love him, but we know that you love him more than we could ever. And we pray your hand of blessing upon him. We pray, Lord, that you prepare him for the surgery coming up. We pray, Father, that there may be doctors and nurses that may have heard about you, but don't know you. But I pray, Father, that even the surgery be a testimony of who you are. As Dick enters into that arena, Lord, he would be a testimony to all of those who do not yet know you. And how marvelous it would be that those who have been entrusted with helping us in our human hearts would come to know the one who takes care of our spiritual nature and changes hearts completely. So bless Dick, Lord. Give him peace. Bless Bev. Give her peace and give them both an extra measure of your grace and your mercy. Be with Glenn and Chrissy and Abby. We just pray, Father, even for this church, that we would be in prayer for our brother Dick as he goes through this procedure, Lord. You pray you see him through it, and he comes out better, better than he was when he went in. Thank you for how he serves you here, and how he is a witness for you, Lord. We pray, Father, we'd have many, many more times of great joy and fellowship with him. Father, we continue to pray for Phil's Uncle Dennis, and Lord, ask that you would continue to watch over him and to help him, Lord, in, the, in this surgery that he's having, which is quite serious. Pray for his heart as well, that you change his heart and you lead him, Lord, to you. I thank you for Phil and his testimony to him. So Lord, again, the seed that's been planted, Father, we know that you would give the growth, but as Phil has planted, perhaps you'd send somebody else to water that with the living waters. So we lift Dennis up to you today as well. And Father, we ask your blessing upon Julie and Israel as they come in just a little while to share who you are and what you have done and all about their ministry. We thank you for them, Lord. We thank you that you gave them the faith by which they live. And Lord, you have given them so many gifts. And yet, Lord, how wonderful it is to see that they have not taken those gifts and hoarded them, but they are sharing those gifts 
but all of those who need Christ. Thank you, Father, that we have a living testimony here in our midst today. Bless them as they speak. Father, I pray in Jesus' name you'd open our hearts and minds to hear what they have to say and to truly understand what an awesome God you are. Father, as we have this opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have entrusted into our hands, how I pray, Father, that what is given here, first and foremost, would go for kingdom building. So bless the offering, Lord, we ask. Let cheerful hearts give back to you what is yours with thanksgiving and love in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read you a little scripture here. This is, uh, I, you've probably heard it said um, that if you're walking with the Lord, your walk looks like this. You're either in a trial, you've just come out of a trial, or you're about to go into a trial. David was well acquainted, and he says in Psalm 18, he says, I will love you, Lord, oh my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. That's a whole lot of titles. And then he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. In other words, his calling on the Lord is praise. He is worshiping God. To what end? So shall I be saved from my enemies. All right, so get that? It's the praise that God responds to. And then he goes on and he says, and I won't read the rest of these verses, but he says a few things like the pangs of death surround me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. I'm not going to ask you to excuse this because this is what he says. The sorrows of Sheol surround me. His life had gone to hell. He was surrounded by the powers and the attacks of the enemy. The snares of death confronted me. And on and on he goes and he talks about how tough his life is. He was in the middle of just a little something. And then he says, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. He worshiped God in the middle of that distressing time of that, that awful, horrible, probably in the middle of it, he thought it can never get worse than this experience. And then he says, the earth shook and trembled. And the foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken. Why? Because he, God, was angry. Now, I'm... He's using hyperbole. He, he talks about the heavens coming down and, you know, all kinds of big things. But that's what it felt to him when he praised God and God delivered him from his enemies. All right. So having said all of that to say this song um, is written by a gentleman who was in the middle of a service in a church that is fairly well known, puts out a lot of music. And they were... Uh, in the middle of a worship service when they got noticed that one of the uh, leaders in the church, their child, had to be rushed to the hospital, airlifted. And this was just before Christmas, I believe, this past year. And it was a couple of weeks later they got notified that the child wasn't going to make it through the night. I mean, what, what can be worse? And and this worship leader said, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray. I, what do I do? And then welling up out of him came this, this line. He said, I raise a hallelujah. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? In the middle of this horrible distress, I raise a hallelujah. So I don't know if you recognize this or not, but... Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm
a hallelujah. Israel and Julie are going to come. And um, I want to remind you too that at the end of the service, um, the ushers will come forward and we'll have a love offering. So we've had that there. So if you're able, we'd love to bless you with a love offering today. So they're going to come and, and have a love offering for Julie and for Israel at the end of the service today. So if you come, so excited to have you again. If you've never met Israel and Julie, um, wow, tremendous, and you'll have the opportunity to fellowship with them afterwards. So whatever one wants to wear the earpiece. I like this. <laughs> you can adjust that whatever way. That, that just bends, so whatever. Is it on? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, we're going to share a little bit about our ministry, um, what the Lord has been doing down in, in Salta, Argentina. But before I started, I just wanted to say to everyone, thank you. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you specifically for praying for me. And um, you probably read in our letter, um, but as Pastor said, um, the Lord has done a miracle. We actually, I wanted to point it out that when we came down here, when we came back from Argentina, we did not come with the intentions. We had no idea that I was having heart problems. It wasn't until about a week or two after we got here that we found out. And um, yeah, I think almost exactly one week after we got here, we found out. And, um, you know, the doctors, they don't figure God into the equation. You know, they said, oh, well, we must have made a mistake. You know, I think your heart beat in such a way that it made it look like, but we were wrong. Well, I believe that God fixed it first. And so I just wanted to say thank you um, from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> no pun intended, for, um, for praying for us. And so we wanted just to share with you a little bit about, um, as I said, what God is doing in Argentina and um, what you have been part of through your prayer, through your giving. Um, this is all the victories that we have down there are all of our victories because those, those are the victories that the Lord gives us. Um, so here's a picture of us. This picture is a little bit outdated if you've seen Eliana. <laughs> She's quite a bit bigger than she was here in this picture. Um, but as you know, we are the Salazars and we are in Argentina. And uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about several different ministries. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, this is mine. <laughs> we forgot who um, speaks when. Um, one of our main ministries that we um, speak about a lot is our local church ministry. Now, uh, we work with an association of churches that has church lots of churches spread around three provinces. And um, especially Israel, who travels a lot, he works in a lot of different churches. But we have our home church, and that's the church um, of El Circulo. And um, every once in a while, we take a church picture outside the front of the church. And so this is us. This is not everybody, but this is a lot of us. And, um, you know, the Lord continues to work in this church. And when we got there, there was only about 20, 30 people. And now they're averaging about 90 every Sunday. And um, this picture um, does not include, I mean, there's some children and teenagers, but there's still a lot more children and teenagers that come um, apart from that. We're not in this photo. Um, so the Lord is continuing to grow in El Circulo, and um, we're going to tell you a little bit more about that. And one of the other ministry we um, start doing in that church is a, a couples meeting, uh, Mary, and you can see when we start, uh, there are a few families come to that activity, but you can see food, they don't need to be translator, and every time they is food, what happened? People came, you know. And, He's down there. 
at least down there. <laughs> and we don't try to tell people if you don't bring anything, you cannot come, you know. And this is one of the ways that we gain a lot of families. They start coming for a meal, and they, but what happened? They hear about Jesus and everything like that, and they start coming, you know, uh, regularly to every service, to every activity in the church, and that is because our, our church is growing up too. And now you can see when we start, there are a few families, we have a plenty of room. Now this is not actually a full um, church, but when they everybody came, we don't have any more room. We need to start thinking and adding more tables because uh, this is one of the things they, okay, what do we do, you know? We need to, we need to expect, in, you know, people start coming and coming, and, and we don't want to say no because we share the gospel. It's not about the meal. We enjoy it, but like, you know, with these pictures, um, I try to make something new for them every time that I can or every time they, I need to be in part, you know, I can be involved and I don't know, what do you call this dish? It's kind of like a chicken stir fry. And I make just for uh, 70 people, you know, and you can see the, it's really look yummy. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, always they try to make me, you know, in this time when my stomach is not, <laughs> I start making noises. Uh, but, you know, everything that you make with uh, charcoal or oh, everything is, is, is not a typical dish, you know. It takes everything better. We say in the mouth oven, you know, if you make in that, we share other times in that. People sometimes uh, cook, but this is really different. If you want to try it, you need to come down. I not say I cook in here, you know, <laughs> but you need to come down and we can enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, actually, we do, uh, this is a, a baptism class. The, every people want to be baptists. Um, we try to, you know, um, teach them and make sure they understand everything. It's not a miracle that you do, you know, but we want to understand that everybody being obedient of God, they think they step, you know, what God asks you for. And this is one of the courses um, we, in total, we're we doing um, two times uh, we baptize it and around 15 people get baptized. Uh, like in the first, uh, we sometimes we do it in a river, you know, uh, and sometimes we do it in another, in, in like a camping place where we can uh, be a uh, big um, uh, service first. And, and then, uh, we do first the baptism and they, we can enjoy the communion with that new Christians, you know, they, they do in that step of, of obedience. Yeah, as Israel said, um, 2019, <clears throat> our church has grown quite a bit. And I don't know if you understood him that we did a baptism uh, at the beginning of the year and a baptism at the end of the year. And in total, we had 15 people baptized in our church. Um, but I love to tell a little personal stories. And I wanted to tell you specifically about this woman. Her name is Veronica. And since we are very close to Bolivia, Probably I'd say about 50 to 60% of the people in our church are actually Bolivians. They were either born in Bolivia and moved to Argentina or their grandparents are Bolivians. But um, anyways, Veronica and her family are Bolivians. And um, <clears throat> we had a woman and I told about her, don't worry, you don't have to remember this. <laughs> I told about her last time, uh, two years ago when we were here, who she was a widow, who her kids started coming to, um, to church. And then um, she started coming, she got saved, and then she brought her brother-in-law. Well, her brother-in-law, Freddie, um, and her sister-in-law, uh, Freddie's wife, Veronica, um, when we first started going to the church, Freddie and Veronica did not come to church. They lived right around the corner from the church, but they didn't come. And um, so first, Freddie came to the church, and he got saved. And then he started asking us to pray for Veronica. Um, Veronica did not know the Lord. 
and there were some problems um, in the marriage between Freddie and Veronica, and at one point it looked like they were going to possibly get a divorce. And he said, pray for Veronica. Help, help me pray for Veronica. And he would invite her to church, and sometimes she would come, and sometimes she, she wouldn't want to come. Well, I want to say that the Lord did an amazing job, an amazing uh, work in Freddie and Veronica, and not just them, but in their whole family. Um, Veronica started coming to church. Veronica got saved. Her two sons, who were actually the first ones that started to come to church, they got saved. And this day, this was literally probably about two or three days before we left Salta, was such a victory for us. Because on this day, not only did Freddie get baptized, Veronica got baptized. Their two sons got baptized. Veronica's mother got baptized. And her two sisters got baptized all on the same day. And that's something that only the Lord can do. And you know what Freddie and Veronica are doing now? They're studying the Bible. They're taking seminary courses because they want to serve the Lord. You know, and God is the only one that can do something like that. Um, and so, and stories like that, I can tell so many stories. Um, I wanted to tell a little bit about what my ministry is. Israel does a lot of traveling, which he's going to tell you about. Um, but, you know, I can't, I can't travel as much because of the kids and everything. But this year, in 2019, I started working together um, with a woman in our church and kind of co-leading the women's ministry with her. Um, when we first got back in two, 2018, Eliana was still a newborn baby, and it, was, it wasn't as much that I could do. But 2019, I really started working with the women. And um, the Lord is doing a great work in the women. Uh, we've seen several women come to know Christ as their Savior. Uh, this picture was Mother's Day, where we had a special meal for the women. And of course, as Israel said, we always get extra people that come. But hey, that's okay, because they're hearing the Word of God. And um, apart from that, we're, every week we're getting together and we're having a Bible study. Um, the women, um, this year we were studying prayer. And we're getting together and we're praying together and um, at times going out and visiting other women. And so the women's class is really, really growing. And I love sharing the word of God. Uh, not only do I get to share the word of God in our own church, but many times I get invited to go to other churches. Because since we have lots of different churches spread out um, across the city of Salta and the province, I get to go and, and share the gospel in, um, and the word of God in other, in other churches. And this picture, and I shared about this in one of our prayer letters. Um, as I said, we have a lot of people from Bolivia. And in Bolivia, in addition to speaking Spanish, a lot of people also speak Quechua, which is um, an indigenous language. And how many of you guys know, in Christ alone, my hope is found? Do you know that song? Well, we had originally, we, somebody found a YouTube video where people are singing it in Quechua. And so this, once a month, we have these uh, united women's meetings where we get all together. Um, all the churches from Salta all send their women to one church. And we have this big women's meeting. Well, this was um, in July of 2019. We had it at our church, and we sang as special music. We sang in Christ alone, my hope is found. We sang it in Spanish, in English, and in Quechua. And um, that was a big accomplishment for the women there. They really enjoyed it. Another ministry that we have is just, I really want to reach our neighbors for Christ. You know, the church that we go to is about 10, 15 minutes from where we live, so it's not in our neighborhood, you know, and I want to reach our neighbors for Christ. And this woman, um, her name is Noelia. She's my neighbor. Um, I actually met her through my parents because my dad, when he comes down, um, you know, he says he comes to visit me, but he really goes to pass out tracks, walk the streets and passing out tracks. And Noelia had known Christ as her Savior, but she had kind of been away from the Lord. Um, but her husband came to know Christ as his Savior with my dad. And then we began um, a friendship with them. And it's nice because she has three little boys that are close to the age of Caleb. And um, we get together probably at least once a week. Uh, we go to the park, or she's in my house, or I'm in her house. And getting to share the Word of God together, talk. And Noelia is really starting to grow in the Lord. And um, so pray for our neighbors. We really want to reach our neighbors for Christ. And then another ministry is the ministry of hospitality. Uh, we get uh, a lot of visiting missionaries, a lot of pastors uh, that are coming up. Sometimes we have them in our home for a meal, or sometimes we give them a place to stay for the night. Um, this family is a family from Venezuela uh, that is a missionary and a pastor that were in Salta that we got to um, spend time with them. And so the ministry of hospitality is something that we like to do. 
And then also going out and visit, visiting. This is in the home of, um, it would be hard to point out who it is, but Rosario and Delfin. They are two people in our church. Um, and they had invited someone else, another couple that is a new couple to our church, um, to their home. And we just got to go and visit and spend time sharing uh, the word of God. So that's something that we try to do um, always every week is going out at least one day taking time to go out and visit people. Because it's a different it's a different situation when you're in church, and it's a different situation when you go into people's homes and re people start to open up and to share their heart with you. And um, so that's just a little about um, the ministry that I have. Uh, like we say, we're doing, I, I do, uh, most the traveling, uh, going places uh, where Julie cannot go. And in some part of Salta, where we live, there are a few churches like uh, four or five churches, and we try to make an activity like this and make connection or relationship in, in between one another. They, you know, you are busy with just one church and you're not having sometimes get to know the other ones. And it's nice to have an activity for, you know, all the family. We try to do something for uh, the adults, you know, the couples, for the teens and for the uh, little ones. And we um, do that, uh, this activity, and, and there are a few churches came, uh, and we try to do this uh, uh, one time a year, you know. Um, and actually, this is not too far for, for where we live, but sometimes they, um, uh, guys invite me to going to preach uh, for the men, and just like an, uh, an hour and a half, I be in that place, and you know, sometimes they invite me when they. It's a night. You can see that picture because every every man's work, and after that work, we get together, something, for eat, and we share the gospel and teach them. And sometimes they invite me, and when it's a opportunity to go with all the family too, and you can see behind there is a, in it's in a mat oven always we enjoy what they cooking for us and you know um, it's really uh, particular because when you have a holiday what do you do you spend time with your family and they waiting for this is in a holiday they waiting for that days and you down there you have a lot of holidays and they waiting for that to we can meet you know everybody in one place and just share all day with a nice meal and something the the God's word too. And sometimes they invite me. There are not too many, but we enjoy, you know, spend time with that small churches because they show I say if you let me choose a big church and a small church, always I go for the small church. Mm -hmm. Very loving people. And you know we try to do a lot of things uh, like uh, evangelist campaign. We pray a lot for that. And we try to not just going, I can do it alone, but we try to encourage them to go with, with us and, and do an uh, evangelist campaign. And we pray a lot, you know. And between activities to share the gospel, we knock door to door. And sometimes we Always we're doing with a local pastor. Every time that we do something, because if we're going alone, where we, our point, our goal is to plug that people in churches. Mm -hmm. And this is for we never doing alone things. We try to always going with the local pastor. And like um, Ruben, he's the ball guy. Uh, always we say, you know, and now we have time. You, you, you know somebody, we, we, we can go visit them and just speak. And this is entire family, ask questions, you know, and we spend a, a nice time. And you know what? We pray a lot, a lot for that campaign evangelist, evangelist campaign, sorry. Uh, and you know what? 43 people came to know Jesus in two days and a half. But you know what? I say, no, look. I know that we, we are praying, but this is, maybe the people don't understand. Because the first time we ask 
you know, we share a little bit, or we knock the door, say, hi, we, we, we want to share the gospel with you. You have a time? Yes. And they say, okay, we explain everything, the plan of salvation, and they, you want us to receive Jesus? Yes. And say, no, something is wrong, because always you, you have rejection, rejection or, 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 you know, but we pray. And when the people of God pray, God answer. And, you know, it's not about us. It's everything about him, you know. Um, <clears throat> also in 2018, we, have, we had the blessing and privilege of having our first short-term missions team come down. We have always said that we want to have people come down, and we had never, we had had families and individuals come down. We never had a, a team come down. So we had our first team come down. This was from a church in Tennessee, and they were three couples. And, of course, as you can imagine, there's a language barrier. You know, there, I, I think sometimes mission teams are a little bit limited in what they can do if you don't speak the language. I mean, it's Spanish, but, um, and I know in the United States more and more people are starting to speak Spanish, but still. Um, so they said, you know, what can we, what can we do? What can we come down that, and do that would be a blessing? Um, and a lot of things that they were able to do through a translator, Israel translating for them and, um, you know, for, um, doing like children's programs and speaking in the churches and everything. But one of the things that they could do was, um, <laughs> manual labor. You could, they could do work. And um, they said, is there a pastor that we would be able to be a blessing to that we could help out? And when they asked us that, you know, our first thoughts were um, that we thought about was Pastor Jorge. Uh, pastor Jorge is the man um, kind of in the gray sweater who has the hat on his, you know, you kind of see only half of him there. Jorge, Pastor Jorge and Leah, um, his wife, they have been, they're in a church about two and a half hours north of us. Because like I said, Israel travels a lot and there's a lot of churches spread out. And for as long as we have known them, they have always um, had a little teeny tiny church, and they've never had their own building. They always rent um, a garage. That was their church for many years, which is basically a garage that they put um, chairs in, or a storefront, or, you know, a small, sometimes even a small house. But, you know, Jorge and Leah are some of the hardest working people that love Jesus so much. And we said, you know, if you're going to help anybody out, we want you to help out Jorge and Leah. And so um, they were with us for about 10 days to two weeks, the, the group was. And um, Jorge and Leah finally have their own property. When I say the Jorge and Leah, their church has their own property. And they're starting to build the walls of their church. And so these, this group of Americans came down. They brought funds to help buy materials because... Um, if you can imagine, these people don't have a lot, so it's very little by little buying, you know, a few bricks here, a little bit of cement there. And, um, and they helped to do some of the work, because sometimes it's, it's Jorge and maybe one of the young men from the church that are out there doing the building of the church. And it's been a little bit discouraging, because this actually happens a lot down there, where they buy materials to do the building, and they get as much work that they can get done that day, and they pack everything up and they leave for the day and they come back the next day and they find that people have stolen their materials. That happens a lot down there. So it's kind of one step forward, two steps back. Um, but they were able to make quite a bit of an advancement on, um, on the church building. Uh, this is a group, the entire group that came down um, with some of the people from Jorge and Leah's church. I don't need to point out who the Americans are. You can tell probably from just looking um, who the North Americans are. But they were such a blessing um, to us and to the churches. It wasn't just Jorge and Leah's church. It was several other churches that um, we went down to. And Jorge and Leah have really, and their church have really um, advanced um, on their building. And the blessing is, is that all of these people, the majority of them, they're all Facebook friends with us. And through the magic of Facebook, <laughs> um, we saw that this, was it Christmas or New Year's? I, it was either Christmas or New Year's service they held for the first time in their new church building. And um, Jorge and Leah were there singing a song of praise to God. Um, and so the Lord is doing great things. And that was a blessing um, to have that group come down. And we'd love more groups to come down too. So if you're interested, talk to us. Like we shared before uh, uh, with Antonio Silimba, the guy over there with the tight, um, 
there is a director of um, uh, seminary courses for extension, and we travel in a lot for that churches, you know, bring all the material, uh, checking. Uh, it's one of the our ministry going, you know, there and visit these churches. Uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 churches we visit in, in one round. Um, and this is a, a group of people, they first, uh, they finish, like we say, the first level of that, you know, uh, study. Uh, and we try to, they, they, between five and seven years, they finish that first level. You know, it's, it's, it's a long time. And what we try to do now is actually this year they start in, actually in a couple of days, they start on a local uh, study center with a local, always, with local pastor, with agreement before, you know, for where they, we get the people from the churches. And we try to do that same level, the first level, but in two years and a half. With the same pastor, they can help us to teach all this material they already they, they have. And this is one of the things that we ask you for, you can pray, because it's, it's a big challenge, you know, to be in, involved with all these uh, new things for me. Uh, and actually, you know, we try to encourage them to study. Um, in the beginning, we start with maybe 20 people appointed for going there. I don't know the statistics now because for the economy and everything like that, some people uh, drop, out. drop out and, and we don't know yet, but we try to encourage them to get, go there and study. We pray a lot for, you know, the, the strategic place. Everybody can go, you know, because it's at night. It's, they start at uh, 8 o'clock to 11. And you can see, because people in, in the day work. If we don't add in, in, in that time, people cannot come, you know. Mm -hmm. And we do it uh, two days in a week. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's very good. We start that in, in, in other province, like Tucumán, because Antonio is from Tucumán. They start, and they say they go pretty, pretty well, and we start now here. But other pastor nearby, they hear, oh, you're doing that there. We want this here too, you know. And it's, 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 it's a challenge to be, you know, uh, getting involved with that. It's just not that. It's find the right people to can run that too, you know. Actually, too, um, I shared the, I became a chaplain too. And uh, always we're going to visit a, um, a jail, and we start um, a new ministry there. It's a little tough. You can see there is not a always good people, but there are people that need Jesus. Mm -hmm. And not just them, their family too. Always they ask us for, you can contact, you know, my family. I want you talk to them about that and, and share about Jesus and pray for that because it's, it's a little... We have a good um, opposite for just the people work there, you know, because opposition. it's opposition because they they had they need to work more because for security for us and everything like that. But uh, the the ministry is really growing, and pray for that too. As you have read in um, our latest prayer letters that we've sent over the last couple months. Um, about the change in mission board that we're doing. Um, we are um, in the, be the beginning of February, February 1st, uh, we officially switched to uh, Fellowship International Mission, um, FIM, which is located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And a lot of people ask us, you know, we explained a little bit in our letter, a lot of people ask us why we switched. Um, one of the reasons why is um, Fellowship International Mission is a much smaller mission board and um, so, re, um, incidentally, it is also a little bit of a less expensive mission board that we don't have to raise quite as much um, 
uh, support to be with them, but we can continue doing the same thing. And also another advantage to being with uh, Fellowship International Mission is that we're going to be able to have more ministry opportunities open to us. When we were with World Venture, um, our ministries were um, limited to just a certain group of churches and certain types of ministries, whereas with Fellowship International Mission, we're going to be able to break out um, and do different, um, more different types of ministries. And, um, you know, the Lord... It was a tough decision. We love World Venture. We continue to love them. Um, but the Lord really led us in this direction. And, um, and we're really excited about being, um, being able to join them um, in their ministry, in the ministry there. And so just pray, continue to pray for us with all this transition time. Um, we still need to um, go and travel around and visit a lot of churches. Right now we have, um, we have booked solid churches right now until um, April and um, with more later on in the year as well. And if the Lord willing, we are going to, con um, we're going to be here in the United States until the end of June, beginning of July. And that is our goal to return to Argentina. Um, as Israel was talking about the seminary extension program um, that he is in, uh, he was actually supposed to start teaching in that seminary extension program this next week. Um, but we had to extend our stay here. And so um, we want to get back as soon as possible. So pray for that. Pray for the seminary extension program that they can find a substitute teacher um, until he can get back. Um, but once again, just thank you. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for um, being part of this ministry. Um, as I said in the beginning, the Lord is doing wonderful things, and you guys are as much part of it as we are. And um, so here's a, a, a recent picture of us. We also have new prayer cards, and the, you're, wel you're welcome to pick one up. Uh, you can sign up if you do not receive our newsletter and you would like to. You can sign up to receive our newsletter. Uh, come and talk to us. We love talking to people. <laughs> and um, come and talk to us. And um, just thank you so very much for partnering with us. And God bless you. Wonderful words of really blessing and encouragement as I was listening to, um, to what Julie and Israel were talking about and saying. And I look at some of the stuff there and I thought, especially with the neighbors and getting out. Because you're so right. There's, there's a big difference between coming together in the church, right, as we gather, and going in people's homes. And I really believe, according to Acts, that that is the model. That they went into people's homes. They met daily in people's homes. But then they gathered together in the temple. You read Acts that they did. Right? They, they dedicated themselves to the, to the apostles' doctrine. And to fellowship and to the prayers and to the breaking of bread. And they did so in everybody's homes. But they also met in the temple. And so that is the model. And as I was listening to, to you speak, that there is the model. And we sometimes miss it. We think that this is the be-all, end-all on Sunday mornings. And it is not the model that Jesus intended for the church. He intended that we should be in people's homes and in, in neighborhoods and the importance of fellowshipping with others as well. And so thank you for reminding us of really the design that God had for his church and where we really should be and in fellowshipping with one another and in our homes. But, you know, when we gather back together, I can, I can only imagine, as it's a great song, but I can only imagine as hearing what those testimonies must be because when you do meet in people's homes... And you begin to share. And you begin to hear what the Lord is doing. And when all of those homes, all of those neighbors come together in a setting like this, there should be times of testimony where we can testify to what God has done. Just as you shared with us today, how God is just working, and whether we're baptisms or how, you know, what, what can, who would have thought that a, that, a, that a group from Tennessee that has no idea what you can do, but God was already preparing on both ends of the world they knew that they were going to go there and they were going to help Pastor Jorge with that, with the, the building that church. And so, you know, God works in so many different ways that we have no idea, but he's always preparing people on both sides. And even for those in families who did not know the Lord, and yet here we have that wonderful blessing of Veronica and Freddie and, and all of their families, the extension, and they can come baptized and come to faith in Jesus Christ. God is such a wonderful God. What a gracious God he is. And thank you so much for bringing words of encouragement 
that really should hope, I pray in, in, in Jesus' name, because I believe he's working through you, to, to stimulate us, to, to fan the, the flames of our faith, to do the very things right here that you are doing in Argentina. The gospel's needed throughout all of the world. And as I said before in my last rant today, because remember what Jesus said. When the gospel is preached in all of the world, he'll come back. But not until the gospel is preached in all of the world. So if you really want that blessed hope Jesus to take us all into glory, it might be really wise to go into all the world, starting here, maybe joining them, however the Lord leads you, to preach the gospel of of Jesus Christ. It's a win-win on all sides. Well, we're going to, uh, before we stand and sing our last song, or we can stand, but we're going to have a special offering. And so if you're able, as, as um, ushers will come and wait upon us for a special offering, um, if you have a check, make it out to First Baptist Church here at Southlands Falls, and then Barb would write one check from, from the account. If you have cash, that's okay as well, whatever, whatever you can. But let's have a word of prayer before we, we take this offering. Father, we thank you for the wonderful testimony that Julie and Israel have brought to us here today. We thank you, Father, that nothing that they're doing, they are taking credit for because they know that they're not accomplishing this on their own. But they've emptied themselves, and Father, they have allowed you to work through them and in them to your glory. And we lift them up, Father. We do pray for the seminary extension. We pray for, for Israel, the Lord, that there would be a substitute to come until he can get back. We pray you, you would bless that ministry tremendously. Father, we pray for their church and we pray for the, the neighborhood gatherings and for the fellowship of churches in that area. Lord, that they would come together and to share what you're doing, but more so, Father, that you would strengthen them, that they just not only come together for those special meetings, but, Lord, they would go out, even people that do not know one another today will go out sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, that many, many would come to Christ. And the next time that we hear uh, from this blessed couple and their family, that many, many more would be baptized in the faith, and you'd receive all of the glory. Lord, we look forward now to even our time of fellowship. But, Father, I pray that we would... Give out of a cheerful heart, Lord, knowing that what we give is going to kingdom work. Seek ye first the kingdom. That's what Jesus said. This is what Jewel and Israel are doing. So, Lord, I pray this offering will bless them in their kingdom work to your glory. In thy precious holy name, amen. Well, let's stand and sing um, our closing song today. Turn your eyes. It's a beautiful song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. But this song has also been uh, added to when you sing the chorus, as we sang this Wednesday night a couple weeks ago, this beautiful song and how it's just such a blessing now to sing these words. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the
to you.